Hello students and welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Pooja Malhotra from Dyal Singh College, Karnal. Today we are going to talk on module Management Information System from the paper Principles and Practices of Management. After completing this module, the students will be able to understand the concept and meaning of MIS or Management Information System, understand the features of MIS, understand the essentials of a good MIS, and the process of installation and development of an effective MIS. We will also discuss the importance of MIS, understand the importance of MIS and reporting system and the limitations of MIS. In present age of information technology, management information system or MIS is an important technique for providing quick information to the management. MIS is basically a reporting system and its purpose is to provide all necessary information to the managers and the superiors who are working at different levels to help them to discharge their functions like planning, organizing, decision making and controlling properly. MIS is a scientific way of collecting, organizing, processing and storing and communicating information regarding almost all the activities of different departments to various managerial levels so that decisions can be taken by the managers in time for the improvement and advancement of the organization. MIS helps in increasing the effectiveness of the organization by providing timely, accurate and relevant information for doing various operations of the organization. The importance of having an effective MIS also lies in the presence of changing economic, social, legal and technological conditions. As we know, present is the age of information and for surviving in the market, timely information regarding business environment both internally as well as externally is very much required. And this information helps the organizations to take advantages of various opportunities available outside and also to overcome the threats by taking proper actions in time. MIS also provides internal information relating to various activities and also shows the manner of utilization of resources in the organization. It shows the performance of various resources. The information relating to idle time, labor turnover, wastages, etc. It can also help the managers to control various costs. The old techniques relying on estimates, guesswork, etc. That does not work in present fast changing scenario. So organizations need fast and quick information system which can bring the information just at a click of mouse. Due to complexities in operations of present large sized organizations which are employing hundreds or thousands of employees and are operating at different areas, maybe national or international, they need more qualitative as well as quantitative information relating to every aspect, which necessitates the presence or adoption of an effective management information system in the organization. So it will be very difficult to manage and control the operations without an effective MIS. In the words of Walter I. Kenwin, a formal method of collecting timely information in a presentable form in order to facilitate effective decision making and implementation in order to carry out organizational operations for the purpose of achieving the organizational goals. Thus, from this definition, it can be said that management information system is a system that provides relevant information to the managers to take decisions effectively and implement the operations accordingly. So, MIS is a systematic function which provides relevant and useful information in the form of reports for carrying out the operations of the organization effectively. Characteristics of management information system. Let's discuss the features. As uh, discussed earlier, 
Management information system is a system of providing timely information to all the managerial levels for performing their operations effectively and efficiently. So for this purpose, a management information system of an organization should possess certain features which are as first one is management orientation. MIS is management oriented. MIS is planned according to the information needs of the management. For designing the MIS, the information needs of all the management levels starting from top to bottom are assessed because the purpose of MIS is to provide information to all levels of management. Hence, it should be designed in such a way so that it can cater to the information needs of all the levels. The second major feature is management directed. As MIS is management oriented, hence management directs the establishment and implementation of MIS in the organization. Hence managers have to actively participate in the establishment of the system. It is not a one-time involvement. Managers will have to participate on a regular basis because the system needs to be continuously reviewed and revised as per the changing information needs of the organization. The next feature of MIS is integrated system. MIS is an integrated system which coordinates the information from different areas to cater to the information needs of the managers efficiently. It includes the interconnected subsystems which operate within the organization and provide information from all areas. For example, if management wants to take a decision regarding production program, it will require information regarding production capacity, labor force, inventory levels, nature and demand pattern of the product, capital requirements, etc. So MIS cannot ignore one or the other factors to supply information. It will have to provide all required information relating to all aspects of the phenomena. Common data flows. MIS should avoid duplication and redundancy in collection, storage and transmission of data. Only a few key documents serve the information needs of most of levels of management. The common data flows require creating and using master files for reporting purpose. Future oriented. MIS is designed to serve the needs and objectives of the business in an efficient manner the MIS system seeks to cater to information needs for various levels for helping them taking decisions regarding future. MIS should be designed in such a way so as to avoid any obsolescence. It should be designed by keeping in view the future information needs of the organization. It is composed of subsystems. MIS is a system integrating various subsystems. Working in meaningful subsystems help in its proper implementation. It helps the designer to focus on manageable entities that can be assigned and computerized by selected systems and programming teams. The next feature is that MIS system is, it should be a flexible system. It should be flexible enough to incorporate appropriate changes in future. Because if it does not allow any changes, its chances of becoming obsolete are very high. MIS is designed to fulfill the information needs of managers for taking decisions for future purpose. So it is not possible to provide accurately all information relating to future periods. Hence, MIS should be such that as it can do modifications in the system whenever it is required. Distributed Data Processing in case of organizations having widespread operations like its sales offices, distribution points, manufacturing plants, etc. are geographically distributed, 
in mis also some form of distributed data processing is required distributed data processing ensures the timely placement of information in the hands of those who need it some of these units may also be operated independently giving more freedom though they should be an integral part of the mis of the organization computerized all activities of uh, the management information system like the collection processing and dissemination of data are done through electronic media because present is the age of information technology so with the help of internet intranets mobile technology etc information is speedily transferred to all areas of the organization now we'll discuss the essentials of a good management information system the purpose of a management information system is to provide all necessary and relevant information to all levels of management to take accurate and timely decisions and also to undertake all the activities of the organization in an effective manner so to fulfill this purpose mis of a company must have certain essential elements which we'll discuss as mis should provide information which can help in evaluation of the performance of various managers in relation to the organizational objectives secondly mis should have a systematic procedure for collecting processing storing and disseminating the information mis should provide only relevant and necessary information and data mis should provide right information at the right time the next is mis should present data in a suitable manner to help decision making mis should also be flexible enough to incorporate appropriate changes whenever these are needed mis should also employ cost benefit analysis the benefits of the system should be more than the costs and mis should integrate all the functional departments in the organization there should be a proper coordination between all the departments of the organization let's talk about the installation of an effective management information system mis is designed to provide relevant information to various managerial levels as per their information needs the level and types of information required by different levels of management is different hence mis should analyze first the information needs in terms of the types of decisions and types of situations handled by the managerial levels so there are certain steps which are involved in development and installation of an appropriate mis in a business organization and these steps are the first step is analyzing the types of decisions made in organization while designing mis the decision making system of the organization should be analyzed thoroughly for this purpose a study of different levels of decision makers and their priorities of decision making should be conducted this analysis is done to ensure timely and correct information to managers for taking various decisions the next step is the cost benefit analysis cost benefit analysis of mis should be done regularly it should be developed in such a way that the benefits of the system are more than the cost of the system the cost of collecting processing storing and disseminating information should be less than the benefits of these operations an effective mis besides evaluating data also eliminates unnecessary data so it should store information in condensed form so that it can be easily absorbed and used by the decision makers the next step is pre testing and training before finally put to use mis should be pre tested first pre testing helps in knowing the problems of the system in the initial stage and these problems can be removed before finally using the system if the system is not pre tested the changes in the system at later stage may prove to be more expensive proper training should also be given to the managers to understand and use the system planning for storage of information while designing the system proper planning should be made for storage of information proper files should be maintained and stored in groups according to common factors 
it will avoid duplication and wastage of data different decision makers with similar information may be identified and grouped together for dissemination of the information mechanism for gathering and processing data the methods for gathering and processing information should be selected properly proper steps should be identified for collection storage evaluation transmission and retrieval of information proper control systems should also be devised for identifying and correcting any deviations that might occur in the system proper arrangement of dissemination of information proper arrangement should be made for the dissemination of information at the right time to the decision makers because delayed information is obsolete information and it is of no use so proper planning should be done for this purpose different formats should be prepared for disseminating information to various decision maker the information can be presented in various forms in the forms of graphs charts figures reports etc review of mis at the regular intervals mis should be reviewed at regular intervals its operations should be reviewed and revised from time to time it will help in finding any deviations or discrepancies in the working of existing mis and appropriate changes can be done timely to overcome these deviations let's now discuss the importance of mis mis provides information to various levels of management in order to take decisions and perform their operations efficiently and effectively in case of a small sized organization there may not be a need for management information system as the owner is in close contact with his employees and has the information regarding all his departments but in case of big organizations where owners and management they are not in direct contact of all operations in the organization they need a system to provide information for taking decisions at all levels the importance of mis can be studied from uh, various aspects like mis is useful for efficient and effective planning and control functions of the management mis provides report giving information about the performance of different resources like men material machinery etc mis also helps in controlling costs by giving information about idle time wastages losses surplus capacity etc mis also gives information about deviations or deficiencies of actual performance from the standards management can take timely action regarding this MIS also gives information regarding the strengths of the organization so that it can take the advantage of its strengths properly. MIS also helps in coordinating the activities of different departments or sections by interlinking them through information networks. And with the help of a strong MIS system the chances of misunderstandings in different departments are the least. MIS and reporting these two are interlinked functions. under management information system information is provided in the form of reports so reporting system should be such that the information contained in the reports should conform to the requirements of the decision makers reports are prepared for entry level of management from top to bottom so that the managers can get timely information about the performance of their subordinates There are three levels of management in every organization top level middle level and lower level at top level of management the executives and managers need information relating to external environment mostly which depicts the opportunities available in the market the probable threats coming from external environment in the form of changing government policies or competitors strategies etc they also need internal information relating to the strengths and weaknesses of the company so that the strengths can be utilized properly and more opportunities can be created and weaknesses can be converted into strengths middle level managers need information relating to execution and implementation of various policies and plans of the organization on the other hand lower level managers they are because they are in direct contact with employees they need to know the performance of employees 
they also get directions from the superiors and executives in the form of uh, news circulars notices etc and need to send reports of performance of various resources to the top level the information to be presented and the method of reporting should be in accordance with specific requirements of these levels of management so there are certain guiding principles regarding reporting system certain principles should be followed these principles are first of all more detailed report should be prepared for lower level of management while more summarized report should be prepared for top level management because first line management which includes supervisors foremen etc they need more detailed reports because they require details of operations while top management which include board of directors etc has limited time and they need information in a very summarized form including only most important and relevant information second is more frequently reports are required for lower level of management by less frequent should be the period of reporting for top level management middle and lower level management require more detailed reports frequently as compared to top level management middle and lower level management is concerned with day to day operations of the concern which requires timely decision making and action on their part the next guiding principle is lesser number of reports is required for lower level of management while large number of reports are required for top level of management top management requires large number of reports in order to control every operation of the organization on the other hand middle and lower level management will require reports only related to their respective departments there are certain general uh, principles of report presentations which should be taken into account the essence of reporting is that it should be presented in a way in a very interesting and understandable manner a good report will help the organization to take timely actions to improve the performance of the concern so while preparing and submitting reports there are certain basic principles which should be taken into consideration and these principles are there should be a proper title of report to depict the subject matter of the report the form of the report should be proper with proper subheadings and paragraphs the name of the person receiving the report should be written on the top of the report secondly the report should contain certain facts there should not be inclusion of opinions or ideas etc the report should be prepared relating to a particular time period and the period should also be mentioned on the top of the report the report should be clear concise and brief in order to keep it brief the clarity should not be sacrificed the next principle is report should be prepared timely and submitted at the time when it is required and on the basis of which quick actions can be taken the gap between happening of event and its reporting should not be too much otherwise quick action cannot be taken a report should report controllable and non controllable factors separately so that suitable action can be taken by the management regarding controllable factors easily reports should contain appropriate remarks the remarks will save the time of the managers and prompt actions can be taken the reports should highlight the deviations of actual performance from standards to draw the attention of the managers the reports should contain information in the form of visuals like graphs charts diagrams to have long lasting impression on the mind comparisons should be made clearly between items in the reports comparison should be made between comparable items only the next one is reports should be reviewed also from time to time and kept properly for future references and records and the format of records should not be changed frequently any changes should be justified accordingly limitations of mis mis has many benefits as we have discussed but along with benefits it also has certain limitations Though MIS is used as a tool to provide information to all levels of management for taking decisions quickly it has certain limitations also 
so the we'll discuss the limitations of uh, mis now the first one is if the mis is not designed properly according to the information needs of different levels of management it will be of little or no use second is if the proper training is not given to the users of the system and they are not aware of its use properly mis will be a failure the essence of mis is providing information if the data and information is obsolete it will be of no use at all the next one is mostly information provided by mis is in quantitative form and hence it ignores the qualitative information like attitude of employees etc usefulness of mis is reduced in the companies where information is not shared in such a complex business environment it may not be possible for existing mis to adapt frequently to changing conditions and the quality of mis output depends upon the quality of inputs and the programs of the system so students let's now summarize what we have learned in this module every organization has to take certain decisions relating to various operations it has to check the performance of various resources like men money machinery etc from time to time so that if there is any deficiency so that can be removed instantly by taking proper actions for all these purposes management needs information if certain activity is going wrong its information must reach the management so that timely action can be taken hence every organization develops an information system which fulfills the informational needs of every level of management whether it is the top level middle level or the lower level at all the levels of management the managers or superiors have to take certain decisions the basis of which is information this information is collected processed and disseminated by the management information system however while designing the mis care should be taken to analyze the informational needs of all the decision makers so it should also provide only relevant information at the time when it is required because obsolete information is no information hence mis is an important controlling tool in the hands of management to have a watch on all the operations of the concern thank you